the language such as existence, non-existence, this language, they're very deceiving and they, you know, it's really difficult. They're very vague. Um, how do you define existence? Uh, you need to think about that. Um, because human mind, when we define something exists or not exists, uh, it's very uh, connected to, you know, like um, time, space, um, and I guess um, usage or what do you call it, um, function. And then, as I said, consensus, but none of them really solidify and make something exist truly or truer or non exist. These distinctions of non existent and existence falling into one of them. This is another thing you have to get used to also when you study, when you uh, try to uh, comprehend the Buddhist view. Generally, Indian wisdom tradition, they have, they have, you know, they really, they're concerned not to fall into uh, eternalism or nihilism. They always in the middle way, the value of middle way. I don't know whether that is the case with the other system, one almost find that many religion, I don't, I'm not, you know, I have no knowledge, very, very little knowledge about Abrahamic system, but sometimes I feel that they, they, one, they almost, they don't even, you, they don't even see it as a falling into one extreme. They don't even call it an extreme. That's the way to go. You know, you almost have to, from the Buddhist point of view, they, it's like they're proud of falling into one extreme. Something truly exists or not exists. They're proud of seeing something as a permanently and ultimately good and something as a permanently bad. Generally, Indian, Buddh uh, Indian wisdom tradition, especially Buddhism, very, very, very wary of this. Believing things as a truly good, truly bad, truly exist, truly non-exist. But as I said, this is difficult, especially habitually speaking, for you to really see me of course, I'm not asking you to, I'm not demanding you to see me as a non-existent. That's like, that's crazy. That's, that's not only crazy, that's defeating the Buddhist view. What, basically what, when, when you are reading the Heart Sutra, what I'm demanding, so, so to speak, is when you look at me, just know that I am there, but I'm also not there. Just like the, What do you, I forgot her name, in the Game of Thrones, <laughs> uh, the blonde girl, what? Khaleesi? Yes, Khaleesi, I am. <laughs> I'm there, but not there, and my dragon. It's, you know, and then, you can go on and on talk about, oh, she should have become a queen, she should not have become a queen, is she still alive because her body got carried by dragon? You know, all oh, that you are, you are free to think, whatever you want to think. But it's all within the sphere of it's there, but at the same time not there. This is sort of the... <laughs> the most uh, simple way I can sort of present the Buddhist view. And um, 
It's, it's as simple as it sounds. It's not only it's difficult habitually, again I'm repeating, but also it's really, really important more than ever. It's more than ever this non-dual, this middle way of understanding the truth. Because we just fall so easily and too much to the right, to the left. We just believe, to, we, you know, we have two problems. Overly believing in things that are believable, overly, too much. Or we overly not believe things that are not believable. And that leads us to unnecessary, what do you call it, um, uh, hope and fear, assumptions and uh, tensions and anxiety and all that. Okay, maybe some questions? We have half an hour. Rinpoche, I, I believe I am eternalist in the morning and sinking into nihilism by the evening in most cases. Sometimes the horns are an adornment. Sometimes they're very painful. And I feel stuck in the middle and at a loss to know. In, a, in our language, where do we fit? Mm, the second part, can you tell me again? The horns are sometimes playful, or uh, you know, an adornment, beautiful, mm -hmm. but then they can also be very painful. Right. So, yes. being aware of that a little, it's painful, the actual, the dichotomy. Being aware of that fact mm -hmm. and then still being dragged to the old habit. Yes. Mm. That, by the way, uh, the Buddhist would say, hmm, you are becoming a Buddhist. <laughs> yes, that's what they will say. But in, in, in language, how, there's no word for non-dualism, non it it's not a word. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> it is. I know. Isn't it strange? Yes. So, So I cry. <laughs> mm. I'm standing here and I'm crying, Rupiche. Yes, I think it's called um, sort of training to long for unlongable, which is good. Because, the prob because, you, because if you don't do that, chances of you long for things that will take you to trouble is very high. So you might as well cry and long for that, that is not longable, because on the long run, it will give you more freedom. <laughs> Rabisha, you said earlier that karma is falsifiable. Can you explain how that is? Oh, you know, karma, is within the sphere of this, it's there, but it's not there. And you know also karma is a relative teaching. And uh, karma is, you know, I was giving you the example of how in, even in the Theravada countries, they talk about anatta, selflessness. At the same time, they talk about shave your hair if you are a monk. You could almost un uh, argue with them, who is shaving? What do you mean by hair? Uh, there is no head, there is no hair. You understand? But yet, so that union of that. 
Um, karma falls into this. Um, yes, on the relative world, uh, on the world of horn and tail, karma, karma functions because you have taken that pill. You understand? Once that is gone, there is no karma. So it's falsifiable once you've taken a pill, is that what you're saying? Because it doesn't, yeah, yeah, it doesn't actually, there is no karma, there is no agent of the karma. They, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's as, it's, it's like this, um, okay. Not only karma, reincarnation, falsifiable. It's a bit like, Four legs, plank, my cups are here, my book is here, and it's a table, you know? That's the karma, isn't it? Put together things and then, you know, habit and also culture, or also the circumstances. If the organizers here, Siddhartha intend, if they only put it, put this here in the middle of this, and if I'm sitting on this, many of you think, hmm, these guys have really put a very strange throne for Rinpoche today. See, table does not exist at that time. The throne suddenly came. You understand? So that's how the karma works. And the reincarnation also works just on that level. But when I use the word just, I'm not using it for a sort of demeaning way. Sort of, I'm not, what do you call it, downvaluing at all. It's so powerful. Just like the horn and the tail. So powerful. Can I ask another question for a friend? Yes. Um, a, a friend was wondering, since you were speaking about uh, the whole sense of viewing things as being both real and, and not real, how would uh, Buddha relate to the fires and the, Trump, the uh, problems that are happening in Australia now? Um, how would their compassion look exactly? Yes, as soon as we talk about the compassion of the Buddha and the Buddha, and as soon as, oh, I think that right at the beginning I was talking about empiricism, right, empirical. It's, as soon as you talk about compassion of the Buddha, the Buddha, then we are talking about someone else's project of, projection of Buddha, right? So yes, that's why I strongly believe that the Buddha had the compassion, the power, omniscience to see this and if we can. So now what we need to do is we need to create the cause and condition to invoke his compassion and the power and do the prayers, which towards the end I'm going to do. Uh, and those who has the cause and condition of blind belief that I have, please join. <laughs> and those who don't have that kind of cause and condition, but those who are those who have, you know, I, you know, I have fallen into uh, the eternalism of believing that there is a Buddha, there is his compassion, there is his omniscience, power, and therefore I will do prayer. Because I'm not, you know, I'm not awakened yet, so I'm still stuck with this. There will be people who say, ah, oh, that's just a story. There is no Buddha, there is no compassion, the fire will be extinguished by fire, people or whatever, you understand? Or not. So that's, that's how the phenomena functions. So prayer works, basically. That's what I'm saying, prayer works. If not for this, this is what the Nagarjuna is. if not for this, the prayer will never work. Things are unchangeable then predestined, right at the beginning I was talking, or a free will, then it's predestined. You just have to wait until that fate is finished. But no, because it is an illusion, that's why something is doable. That's why prayer works, firemen works, politicians, if they act, have their act together, it could work. <laughs> you understand? Thanks for 
Pichet. You yes. used to talk about the snake and the rope. The snake and the rope, are they like the horns and the tail? Yes, I was using some updated, yeah. updated example. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, hello. Um, I just wanted to ask what you recommend in letting go of self in regards to, especially amongst our generation, younger people, we're bred into this idea of having to find self. And now it's this whole idea of letting go of that. Mm. It's pretty hard to come to terms with, but I wonder how you would start to go about that. You see, this is really good, you ask, because this is exactly why I think the Buddhist view and also the meditation and action really can contribute to especially the modern world. Um, because the letting go, I don't know, the idea of letting go seems to have a lot of sacrifice. It's painful. I, I for one, don't want to sacrifice things. You understand? I think it's much more uh, profitable and much more soothing to really get used to the idea that this self is there but it's also not there. So there's nothing to let go but also that is a letting go. You got… yeah? Mm -hmm. I think that's more profitable. We will talk about this um, um, like… Um, like especially young people, they are so much into being cool, isn't it? Cool, right? Cool, fashionable, unique. I think the idea of if you, if the I'm there, but I'm there, but not there. I think it could really help the, to enhance that confidence because uh, letting go. I need to really contemplate on this phrase, letting go self. Mm. It sounds to me a sacrifice. Uh, sacrifice, yes, some people may be able to do it, but um, why not see the truth? That's actually a much better sacrifice, I think. If you wouldn't mind me bringing the microphone to my grandfather to ask a question. Yes, Just please. Hello, Ramachay. Nice to see you back in Australia. What happened to you? What do you... <laughs> Why? What's <so> Okay. <laughs> I broke my foot. Just yes, two days ago in beer. But speaking of appearing and disappearing and things coming and things going, I'm a little confused as to how do you do, how does one cook dinner or drive a car if things are appearing and disappearing? And I'm, I didn't say things are appearing and disappearing. No? No, not at all. Ah. I'm saying while it's appearing, it's not there also. This is important you brought it up. This is the classic Buddhist phrase. Like a reflection of the moon in the water. It's there, but it's not there. I didn't say moon disappeared when the moment you look at it, as if, you know, the moon is… reflection of the moon is shy. No, it's there, very intact. And, and, to and it also actually has an order. You look at it, it's there. Your granddaughter looks at it, it's there. Two of you will solidify that it's there more. But if it's there and then one minute and not there the next minute… No. Uh, what do you mean by next minute? You mean actually like a cloud comes and well, then no more there? I guess that's what you're suggesting. No. 
Actually, I'm talking about it's there when there is no cloud, and then the cloud comes, and also the reflection of the cloud, and no more moon. All action is happening there, but it's also not there. That's all I'm saying. Thank you. <laughs> now I'm not there. Somehow I'm not satisfied. I don't think you have understood what I just said. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> uh, Rinpoche, um, so, so I had a question and then I listened to that and then that made me think of things and that's making me reconsider the question. But, okay, um, very good. Cause and conditions. Yeah. <laughs> so we have to get rid of hope and fear, which is, I guess, fundamental duality, but when, when there's no hope and fear, like, what do we do? We, we will do? be talking more during the so-called meditation and action. Yeah. But I think it, maybe today since we are talking about the view, I think it's important if you can, you know, if you think about that it's there but it's not there, then I, it should give you some sort of a, okay, so my hope and both my hope and fear is a little bit like a groundless. Yeah. It should really release you from blindly hoping or blindly afraid of. Okay, so the, the hope and fear and the normal motivations that make us do things are still there, but in that moment we can recognize it's, it's not really there, it's, it's there but it doesn't yes. affect you so much. But it's still something, you still do things, you wake up in the morning and do all Very these much. normal things. That, yeah. yeah, watch whole episode t t till the end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Of course. Yeah. And would that also apply to when, when we, are, we do bodhisattva activities, when we release other sentient beings from suffering? Is that also a story in the same way? Exactly. That's it's what like I was just, saying. Just the if best you, story. Yes. It's, it's if like, you look at somebody, you should even say, don't worry, even though it sounds so ridiculous. Yeah. There isn't, you know, okay, you try, try to say, don't worry to somebody who's actually not taking any pills. That's how it is. Okay. Nobody has a horn. Nobody has a tail, and we, yet you say, don't worry. And we have to con sort of convince everyone that they don't have horns and tails. Or we have to, or we, that's what we're trying to do. And uh, we don't have mean, to do anything. Are you talking about the bodhisattvas? Yeah, that's another action. Uh. What's the question again? That's a tricky question. I better, better be careful. Okay, is, this, is the bodhisattva path about convincing everyone that they don't have a horn and a tail? Okay, I see, I see, I see. Yeah. Okay, okay. Mm, yeah, well, that's one of the homework, so to speak. <laughs> that's one of the one of it. But um, bodhisattva also is courageous. Do you know why? Because actually there is no horn and tail. So bodhisattvas don't have to go through with a chainsaw. Oh. Yeah. Because you know, the Bodhisattva says, oh, you know, actually there is no horn and tail. So it's kind of a fairly easy job. Is it? <laughs> you understand? Yeah. It's... If they do have a horn and tail, then you are in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be a lot of trash, especially if you're a successful Bodhisattva. That's, that's very, very useful. Oh. <laughs> it's a bit like right now I feel slightly, I guess, nervous talking in front of everyone, but not really nervous, it's just these, it's not actually there, like nothing can, bad can happen, like it's, it's fine. Are you sure you haven't taken anything? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Uh, dear Rinpo Che, uh, firstly, I want to thank you for your teaching today. And uh, my first question is that uh, I think the non-duality view is the comparatively right view in Buddhism. And uh, should we keep this view on our daily life, or how can we maintain it? How can mm, how can we keep it? It yes, I think we will be talking more up during the action. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, but are you coming tomorrow? Yes. Okay, then, yeah. Then I'll leave the question tomorrow. Okay. 
And well, I got another question. Uh, we all know you are a very famous director uh, since I've been working in the film industry for years. I always find uh, some kind of similarity between the film and the, the real life. And uh, my question is, does that mean our real life probably can be a, uh, a, could be a film projected by our conscience? Yes, but first of all, I should say I'm not that famous. If I'm famous... <laughs> Writer. You are famous to me. Okay. <laughs> yes, I understand. That's <laughs> that's how the like a reflection of the moon. Uh. <laughs> I'm known for uh, making film that really puts you to sleep. <laughs> anyway, um, writing. Yes, I think it can. It can, um, it can, but you know, the interesting is sometimes when you write about your life so much, so to the truth, you actually, because the fiction is so well written, you forget it's also fiction, isn't it? It's like so good, like... Um, Some really good writers, they can write amazing stuff and then you forget. That's, yeah. And I think that's what is happening all the time. Like we write our story so well that we forget that we live in a... N not there, but it's there, it's there, but it's not there. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, yes, yes. Well, uh, does that mean our conscience is also is there and uh, is not there? Consciousness? At the same time. Consciousness? Are you saying consciousness? Yes. Yes. It's there, but it's not there. But now you are getting to the real uh, sort of going really far. I mean, you're going really deep. Um, yeah. Movie, Game of Thrones is there, is not there. That sort of understandable, you can buy that. But this, there, but not there. Mm, much difficult to chew, much more difficult to accept. Now, consciousness, mind is not there, but it's there. Much more difficult to understand. And this is where I would say, Buddhism has invested a lot of time and energy for 2,000 years to explain that. Thank okay. you. I, thanks for everything. It's been really, really good. Um, I was reading uh, a, a book um, by His Holiness, uh, and he was describing Arya Sangha's um, my, my, bringing the mind-only idea into being because people were becoming too nihilistic with uh, no mind. Mm -hmm. Is that a useful stepping stone for mere mortals like me? I, f I find I can accept there and not there quite readily if I have that mind-only view. Look, today, you know, we, I try to present Buddha Dharma a view, the most important and the most difficult one in a very short time. Mm. So it's very difficult. Now I will give you one example. You know, I said, whole phenomena, everything, including the consciousness, mm. is there but it's not there. And this, this, the establishing of this view and dive, uh, dive uh, what do you call it, decipher or really trying to explain this, there are so many liturgy and so many different schools. In fact, you can sort of broadly say, you see, they are one. Actually, they are one. It's a bit like a, I don't know, like a photographer. Photographer, teacher can talk, teach his student um, shade. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, he's talking about the light, because they're the same thing, isn't it? But you can, 
It depending on what kind of student you have. Maybe the student likes to dwell with a shade more. Then you talk about the shade. Mm. So you talk about the shade, how to create a shade. But simultaneously you are also fiddling with the light. Just like that with another student, you talk about lighting, how to put light. But you are also creating the sh shadow. It's a bit like this. I mean, this is a really rough example. So in Buddhism also, in order to explain this too, there is actually, you know, like whole commentary written by a bunch of people like Nagarjuna. Mm. It's more concentrating, concentrating and explaining the, it's not their part. And then there's Asanga people, like a Yogacharya people, who talks more about is their part. Mm. And not only the schools, actually it has also influenced the society. If you go to Tibet, the Tibetans are more into this Nagarjuna people, so they talk about emptiness a lot. But if you go to maybe China, I, I suspect, like especially the later great Zen masters, they may be talking more on is their part. Thus, you hear things like Pure Land School, Lotus uh, Sutra, so on and so forth. But they are both so important because like the light and the shadow. Okay. Dear Rinpoche, uh, can, can we interpret that uh, there is the, because in the beginning you say there is get and get rid of. So, do you mean that the get is like more like it's there, and get rid of is more like there is not? Can well, I was talking more the the result, the aim of Buddha Dharma, contrary to a lot of people's way of expressing achieve enlightenment, get enlightenment, sort of, you know, you get something. But actually, the Buddhist, Buddhist aim, the nirvana or the result, is more defined by what you get rid of. What you get rid of. That's why I was saying, you don't need a head. What you need to get rid of is the delusion of the horn. So one is result and one is view and they are not so connected? No, no. The result is when you are free from this delusion. That's the result. And That's to define the result. Okay, so if somebody asks you, what is, what do you, uh, are you Buddhist? Yes. What do you believe in? It's there, but it's not there. That actually, because they will, it will drive them nuts, but that's how it is. Okay. It's of course, the safest answer for you to tell you a, you know, okay, Christmas party or Chinese New Year party, or the Buddhists believe in vegetarian, <laughs> Buddhists believe in smiling, Buddhists believe in non-violence, Buddhists believe in karma, reincarnation, yeah, I think that will do. But actually you should be saying, you know, Buddhists believe things as in, it, all things are there, but it's not there, but mm, I don't think anybody will like you for that. <laughs> okay, the second question, if they ask you, okay, so what are you aiming for? What do you get? Then you say, well, we don't get anything, we only get rid of things. <laughs> that's what it should be, actually, that's what it should be. Okay, and the, the, uh, another is, uh, as you answer the other person's question, that the there is and there is not, this view can help people to cultivate confidence. Yes. I, and how, how does it work? That's my question. Because I think, I gave you the example already, when you are watching the TV, uh, what, why you have the confidence to go to the toilet if you need to go? Because you know it's there, but it's also not there. If you don't have one of those, then you don't have the confidence. You have to either finish. You got that? 
No, you, we don't have the confidence that because we think it's there or it's not there. Like it's there in 2D and 3D is not there, so we can use to it. it. What? I mean, in the screen it's there, but uh, more... In, in reality it's not there, right? That's why... We have confidence to go to the toilet. Yes. So we just can have like confidence. That, okay. Just like that, if, if something is happening in your life, which is really, really bothering you, if you can really, really habituate yourself, really realize that whatever you are valuing, whatever you are putting so much effort, is actually there, but it's also not there, then you can take a break from your life. <coughs> okay. okay, thank you. Okay, this will be the last question and then I will do a prayer, okay. Rubisha, do we just think too much? <laughs> yes, that's why I'm going to end it soon. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay, so as I said earlier, I'm going to do a prayer uh, for me, of course, you know, for awakening of all uh, all beings from all kinds of delusions, but especially uh, the situation in Australia at the moment, and also situations in China. So I will do prayers to one of my most fond deity, Aryatara. So those who share my phenomena, please also I join me. Um, Jesus, my beloved, my child, so Lord, just a dream of you, my child, so Jesus, so my child, so Jesus, so my child, so Lord, so my child, so Jesus, so my child, so Lord, so my child, so Jesus, so my child, so Lord, so my child, so Jesus, so my child, so Lord, so my child, so Jesus, so my child, so Lord, so my child, so Jesus, so my child, so Lord, so my child, so Jesus, so my child, so Lord, so my child, so Jesus, so my child, so Lord, so my child, so Jesus, so my child, so Lord, so my child, so Jesus, so my child, so Lord, so my child, so Jesus, so my child, so Lord, so my child, so Jesus, so my child, so Lord, so my child, so Jesus, so my child, so Lord, so my child, so Jesus, so my child, so Lord, so ロンランドとアンチにもちゃんとトゥリジバチムデジバナマジムジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジジ